Hunter Hunter episode 57, aka another reason why Hunter Hunter is the best ongoing shonen anime at the moment. Oh man, this episode, another great one, suspenseful, drama, thrilling, just everything to it, really solid, and just another awesome episode, and it was set up yet again, because there wasn't really no action or anything like that, but it still uh, kind of had a lot of surprises to it, and really just a lot of, uh, just like, what's gonna happen next type of moments, and I really enjoyed it. So you got Gon and Kidoa, they're captured, and at the same time, they basically set up where uh, uh, you got uh, Leorio, he sets up where basically they get the leader. They got Krolo and they capture him and Karapika gets out of there with him. Oh man, finally, first of all, I'm really excited that finally Leorio actually had a big part in, you know, something going down. Like he actually set it up and I was laughing my ass up when he was on the phone talking all belligerent and stuff. I was like, oh man, this is hilarious. But it was actually a setup to get the boss out of there so that they could uh, kidnap him and use him. And I thought that was, uh, that was awesome. It was brilliant and it just really made Leorio more useful than normal because for a long time since like, I want to say Hunter exams, he hasn't really done much. So to see him actually participate in, in the capturing of Krolo, I was really excited. Now, Krolo, again, shows that he's a badass. Because even in the most worst situations, he already calculated everything in his mind. He's like, okay, uh, since we got two of their people, they ain't going to do shit. Uh, and he, his heartbeat isn't jumping or anything. He's not worried about getting killed. And I love it. It shows that he's a badass. And it, it was just really awesome. And we even get to see a little flashback of when the spider first came together and whatnot and they looked a little bit different so you know time definitely took a toll on changing them up because uh even Krolo didn't really look the same he had like normal hair or whatever so i just like seeing the difference from then and now like they really lived the journey from whatever happened and you know it was just pretty awesome to see now here's the thing when they were conflicting whether to follow pakunoda over to you know where i guess karapika was telling her to go or to just stay there and go to the hideout like karapika said uh, I was kind of more so, to be honest with you, like, I like Nobunaga, because not only is he a badass, and he'll cut your head off, as proven in episode 56, but he really deeply cares about his comrades, and out of all the spider, he was the only one, like, no, you know, we're gonna go get Krolo, we're, we're gonna, I mean, go listen to Krolo, we're gonna stay and with the ten of us over there, and I, I really like that, I think that it's really honorable that he truly cares for his comrades, and he's not only just a slasher and killer, I mean, he'll kill you in a heartbeat, we saw that. But he also cares about his comrades, and that's what makes Nobunaga definitely my favorite uh, Spider member at the moment. It's him and Kuroto. I really like both of them. I think they're just the bomb. And it was kind of messed up that uh, the girl with the vacuum comes and knocks him out. I'm like, ah, seriously, really? Come on. So, you know, I mean, they listen to Kuroto's instructions because he always told them, you know, you think about the, the bigger picture. You think about the spider. Sometimes the legs are more important than the head of the spider. And, you know, I like that analogy, by the way. And just overall, this episode really set everything up. I feel bad for Pakunoda because I'm sure, like, I, I haven't read it, obviously, or, or seen it, but I'm sure that her death is coming soon based on what's going on. And overall, just like, Hunter Hunter, man. This, this is right here. I highly recommend it. Again, like, you're not getting this from Naruto at the moment. You're not getting this from One Piece at the moment. You're not getting this from Fairy Tale at the moment. You're not. You're not getting this seriousness, action, and it's all in Shonen with a dark twist. Also, by the way, want to give props to Where's Do? A uh, Krolo's voice actor really just has this quiet whisper yet methodical and awesome voice when he's talking a lot of times in this episode really nicely done definitely want to give credit where it's due and just overall this episode is really solid i love seeing how karapika has things down packed as far as like calling and saying let me speak to one of the hostages and getting the info directly from kitawa so that way they don't trick him and i want to see what the crew is going to do the uh, troop are, are they going to actually go after pakunoda or are they going to just go back to the hideout um, it's looking like they're going to go based off the preview back to the hideout, but I'm not exactly sure. I want to see what's going to happen with that. Uh, I I'm guessing, though, judging from the way they were saying that they were going to follow her, but then after the call from Karapika, I don't know. It it's hard to call, but I I'm going to say that they're going to probably go to the hideout because now they have no choice. I don't know. It, it really just depends, but overall, 
awesome episode for a setup. It was really, really good and just entertaining and suspenseful and thrilling and everything about it was top notch animation, uh, voice acting. I, I really love it when the voice acting delivers to a, a point where it's noticeable, like, God damn, they're doing an amazing job. And first of all, Nobunaga's voice actor, the same dude as Toby, it's, he does a phenomenal job as Nobunaga. It's similar sounding, because, you know, it's obviously the same person, but it's different. It has that feel of like a rugged man, a, a man that will slice you. You know, he really does a great job. And again, just can't wait to see. It was kind of funny. The funny moment for me, maybe not for everyone else, was when uh, Kadapiko is dressed as a woman in the limo or the, the car or whatever that they're in. And when Chrono says, oh, I didn't know that the chain user was a woman. And he's like, I'm not. And he takes the wig off. I was uh, laughing. That was pretty funny. And, you know, Kadapika really got to watch his temper because he could blow things for, you know, just getting pissed off. Like, he got real enraged when Chrono was taunting him. And it's like, you need to chill out, Kurapika. I hope he gets character development in time where stuff like that doesn't make him flip out immediately. He needs to learn to chill. And I want to see that towards the end of the series or, you know, later on down the road. See Kurapika develop and, you know, just calm down a little bit more because he is very tense when it comes to the spiders. And uh, another thing that I want to learn, I hope we get to learn it, was if uh, Krolo was actually the leader during the time when they killed the uh, Kurta uh, clan, you know, Kurapika's clan. I want to learn that as well. I hope... Uh, you know, it gets explained. Takashi explains it or whatever. Uh, again, overall, awesome episode. Let me know what you think, though. Were you hype? Is Hunter x Hunter right now really just outclassing everything? I mean, it's it's unfair in a way because Naruto One Piece are filler. And, you know, the other animes just never really get to that serious level like Hunter x Hunter. But what do you think? Is Hunter x Hunter really just at the moment the best ongoing uh, shonen anime? Let me know in the comment section below your overall thoughts of this episode because... This is probably going to be my favorite arc thus far in Hunter x Hunter. At, at first, it was uh, the Hunter exams. That was like my favorite. And then the other arcs were pretty good, but didn't top the Hunter exams for me because I really enjoyed it. But this definitely is my favorite thus far. Uh, for Neverworld, and as always, people, have an awesome day.